Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for another awesome webinar, Perfect Mind. We have Vahid Shababi, our Director of Sales. He's going to go over some tips and techniques of how you can turn your website into a lead generating machine. So I'll let you take it away, Vahid. Thank you, Shaira. Let's start today's webinar. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank you uh, for attending the webinar and uh, coming to this webinar. Uh, as a business owner, I know you all um, have a very important task to do during the day and spending an hour on a webinar. That shows me how important your business is uh, to you and how important it is for you to have a very successful website uh, that can generate leads for you. So today, um, we're going to talk about how your website can become a lead generator machine and uh, what you need to do, some tips on what needs to be done on the website, on the background, in order for you to have a very successful website. Um, when we talk about the website, first let's, let's go one step back and talk about the grow, uh, growth formula. What is the growth formula? Um, of course, you need to have more leads. But by having more leads, it doesn't mean that you're going to grow your business. Um, when you have more leads, you need to be able to convert those leads into members. And when you convert all those leads to members and clients, then you need to make sure you can close the back doors so you have a very successful client base so they're not quitting on you. And then from those loyal clients, you need to start generating more leads. Today, we're going to focus on the first part of it, which is how to gener generate more leads. And we're going to have a very quick um, um, talk about like, how to convert these leads to members or how you can warm them up to be ready to become a member. So let's start from the beginning. Of course, you need to have a very professional design website. I know some of you are happy with the website design that you have today. You may get good feedback uh, from, um, from your elites, from your clients, or some of you may not be happy with your website design, right? Um, there, is, there is something very important about a website design that you need to know. Your website is probably the most important online presentation that you have for many different reasons. First reason, if you don't have any website, you, it's better than having a very bad design website, an unprofessional website, because you still have a chance to get, uh, to get some of the people who are looking for you online. But if you have a very bad design website, which is not as professional as you are, you may have some lead, some prospect that goes online, look for your business, and and they will think with their eyes. They will see, uh, you know, something online which doesn't represent your business, which doesn't represent your product or service, just because you think, okay, you know, having a website, I don't have money right now to, to invest on my website. But that is wrong because those people, they're not going to even try to come by your practice, come by your office, come by your school or studio or whatever type of business that you have. So with that, um, with that, you have to make sure your website is as professional as you are. Your prospect will think with their eyes, fortunately or unfortunately. Some businesses take advantage of that, and they will design a very beautiful and professional design website. However, they're not offering a good service on the background. But some businesses, they focus too much on offering a good service and product, which is awesome. However, they don't have a good presentation online. So people, when they go on their website, they feel, okay, maybe they're not professional enough for me to give them business. So you need to make sure that your website is as professional as you are, is as professional as the service you're offering, is as professional as uh, the school studio business that you have. If you pass that stage, now we can talk about how to market. Now we can talk about how to bring all these leads. But if you don't have the first step, which is having a professional website, I'm telling you right now you are losing many, many businesses because they will look for it. They find you. They find somebody else. And they're going to compare your professionalism and how good you are based on what they see online. Now, let's say you have a beautiful website. But... There is no way for your leads to contact you easy. 
They have to look for your phone number. They have to go to the contact us page. They have to go to the footer. Somebody has it on the header. You have to make it easy for, for leads to contact you. That's the bottom line. You, it should be very easy. doesn't matter if they're checking your website from a mobile phone. It should be easy if they, if they are a 50 years old uh, parent that they are not computer savvy and they're looking for a service for their uh, children or you know, grandchildren. You have to make it easy. This is not their responsibility to find how to contact you. This is your responsibility to make it easy for all these people who might be computer savvy or, not, might, or might be uh, not computer savvy to contact you. So there are many different factors. There are many different ways to make it easy for these people to contact you. Of course, the first thing is have your phone number on the home page and some are easy. Don't try to use fancy uh, fonts that is not visible on some of the devices. Make it easy for them to contact you. But more importantly is you need to have a form on the home page for, for them to, to be able to contact you. And when you have a form, always remember, there is a rule. If you're asking for three pieces of information, you need to give uh, you know, three pieces of information to, to your leads or prospect. If you're asking for first name, last name, phone number, you need to make sure you have three different things that you are offering them. So they're, they're going to fill up the form. You need to educate them that I'm not going to send you email every single day. Because it, all of us, we don't want to give out our, our email just because we know we're going to be bombarded by all these materials and emails. So um, the form that you have has to have a few different criteria. Number one, make sure it's professional design. Make sure the form that you have, it's, it's good enough for them to be attracted and it's very visible on your website. Don't just put it at the bottom of you know, your home page that they have to scroll down and find it. Make it very visible for them. Number two. Whatever internal management system that you are using for your business, make sure those forms is connected to your, to, your, um, uh, to your system. I hate the forms which is an email and send an email to the business owner for many different reasons. Number one, that email may go to junk. That email, uh, you, you, might be, you may get busy and you won't be able to check that email. Or when you check that email, you may not be able to contact uh, that lead or that prospect right away. So make sure your website is fully connected with whatever management system that you're using on the background. For many different reasons that I will go over that and what needs to be done on the background in order to warm up all these leads for yourself, for your front desk, or anybody at your business who's responsible to contacting all these leads. Remember, you are spending money on these leads. The money that you're spending is the money that you're spending on advertising, is the money that you invested on your website to have a beautiful website. Number three, it has to be super easy to create. Why? Because you may have different landing pages. You may have a special promotion. You may have, okay, it's a, uh, it's, it's a long weekend, you want to have a promotion for a long weekend. It's a Valentine's Day, you want to have a promotion for Valentine's Day. You should be able to create all these forms yourself without waiting for anybody else within a few seconds and add it to your website. Measure the marketing at the end. We'll talk about the measurement shortly. It has to be easy to update or change, right? I, I don't recommend you to design a website that you won't be able to update it, at least the basics. Because people, when they take a look at your website and they see, okay, you have a promotion on the website, it's for Valentine's Day, or it's for a month ago, or I still go on a website and I see a promotion for New Year, to meet that business, they don't care enough to update their website. And that is not professional. So you need to make sure your website is professional enough at all times. And being professional has a few different aspects. Lastly, when you're your form is connected to your system. Make sure it's connected to whatever email application that you're using today for marketing. Why? Because I go online, I fill up a form. If I'm a lead that I have no idea about your business, I'm not going to wait for your response. I'm going to go to the next website. I'm going to fill up the form again. I'm going to go to the next one and next one because I'm researching online. That's the beauty of having, being, uh, being on the Internet and on, uh, being able to search online. Now, who's going to win my business? Whoever contacts me first, whoever educate me first, whoever send me an email and say, hey, I got your request, we're going to contact you in two hours. 
So you need to make some automated email in the background. As soon as any lead or prospect comes in, you have to warm them up beforehand. You need to you know, buy some time for yourself. Now, um, on, the, on the chat box, if you already have an opt-in form or a web form on your homepage with the, the, with the criteria that I just talked about it, if you have it, please type yes, and if you don't have it, please type no. I just want to see what, what is the percentage of the um, you know, good website uh, in, in, for the people who are attending this webinar. All right. Okay, so I see some yeses, some noes on the, uh, on the website. Um, if you don't have a form on, uh, if you don't have a form on your home page, you need to make sure uh, to to uh, to add it right away because there are many leads who are visiting your website. However, uh, they um, they're not contacting you, right? Uh, just because they don't have a way to contact you. Now, I talked about like if you are asking for two pieces of information, you need to have some sort of offer, you need to, have to give out some sort of um, information. This is a, a basic uh, stats as far as what are you asking for, what you need to offer. Of the traffic of 100 people, if you have no offer on your opt-in forms or your web form, and you're asking for first name, last name, email, and phone number, the conversion rate will be less than 1%. So you're lucky if you get, um, if you get one lead out of that. So if you have a traffic of 100 people, right, um, and um, you, you have a newsletter subscription, as that's what you, they're offering, and you're asking for name and email, you get 3 to 5%. If you are offering free trial or free classes, something free, right, people like to get free things. And uh, you're asking for name, email, phone number, program uh, of interest. You will make it 10 to 20 percent because people like to get something for free. Lastly, if you have free downloads like mini courses, uh, success guides, and you're asking for name and email, you have a chance to get 35 to 65 percent. Now, the question is, what should I put on my forum? We do have low resistance form and high resistance form. The more information that you get, you're gonna go on the higher. Right, you need to be able first of all to connect with the people who are looking at that page. If you are offering a, you know a specific service or product on a specific page, make sure whatever offer that you have, whatever download that you have, whatever uh, offering that you have is related to that service. Is not like general. If, for example, I do have a package for um, if if I'm running a, if you're running a yoga studio and I'm offering. A, a specific type of yoga for children or if I'm running a martial, martial arts school and offering a specific thing for, uh, for um, um, you know, children, make sure the offering is related to that page. Otherwise, people won't be connected. Now, I have a question that what is a good wording for, uh, for a form? I'll go over that. As I said, the wording, it all depends on what you're offering. It all depends on what type of page that you have. Today is word of edu-selling. Edu-selling meaning selling people through education. The era of marketing that used to be like, if you sign up in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to you know, give you 50% off. In the next five minutes, I'm going to give this one. That era is almost over. Today, people will give you business if you can educate them. If you are buying a service or product for you, you know, educate them on the benefits, why they have to do that. If they do that, what will happen? What is the benefit for them? That's what we call it edu-selling, meaning education, education, education. At the end, they, they have no other uh, question, no other objection, just because you educated them well. Now, um, some of the examples, like, the example that you have is like 25% uh, off, uh, you know, uh, first color style, sign up 25% color, first name, full name, email, and phone number. Try it now. The wording is very important. Don't just uh, put it like um, submit or something like that. It has to be related. This one, for example, it says uh, submit. I like to be more personal, right? Uh, simply fill out uh, this form to receive a free trial program. Right? Get out, uh, get our, our free ebook, Easy Weight Loss in Seven Steps. And I know what this ebook is about. And then when somebody signs up, I can easily send an automated email and educate them on the benefits of this. Now, another important uh, fact, another important um, 
factor for the web forms for your website is coloring. Don't pick the color just based on what you like. Pick the color based on facts that, okay, for example, yellow, what, is, what yellow does to the viewers, what red does to the viewers, right? For example, when you're talking about red, red gives energy, right? What is blue for? What is green for? What is orange, uh, orange for? Uh, every single color that you use on your website, it has a meaning. And you have to make sure you are using it in the right place, right, and at the right time. Of course, your website should support your branding, should support uh, whatever brand, logo, anything that you have. But you have to be careful with the secondary color that you use on your website. Or in a specific page, landing page, on, on the button, uh, you need to make sure the color you are using the right color because every single color based on the studies out there has this effect on the people. Now, if you are selling something, don't wait for people to walk in to your school, to your studio, to your business. Turn your website into 24-7 pro shop. What is the reason for that? I think we all agree on sometimes we are in the mood of shopping. You may walk into the, to the shoe store 10 times. You see a shoe every single time. You take a look at it. You love it. You check the price. You know, it's too much. One day, you, have, you just walk in, get the shoe. You will purchase that. You go back home just because we are in the mood of shopping. Sometimes people are in that mood, right? So if you don't want to lose them at that moment, you have to make sure you give them the ability to purchase at any given time. If your website can, can handle all these purchasing, selling membership, selling products at any given time, they may just, you know, at, uh, at night they're just uh, uh, going around, okay, they check the bank account, wow, this month I'm pretty good. You know what? I deserve to get something for myself. I'm going to go on this website, I'm going to purchase this. So don't wait for them. Make it easy for people to give you business. At the end, you are asking for their business. If you are asking for this their business, make sure to make it easy for them to, um, to purchase or to give you business. Now, we talked about updating. You have to make sure that your website is updated at all the time for simply because people, when they go on their website and they see outdated uh, links, they see outdated pictures, they see outdated um, calendar, it, for them is you're not taking care of your website. Right? Now, on the side of that, two years ago, three years ago, I would have said uh, having a mobile website is a luxury for your marketing. Today, you have to. You cannot afford not having your website for mobile. People check their website when they're uh, sitting at the bus. Or people check their different websites when they're in the cab, when they're uh, at the airport. Right? And if you lose them just because your website is not mobile friendly, meaning you're losing all their businesses. As I said, you have to make sure your website is ready for, at all the time to get business from the people who's interested to give you business, right? So you have to make sure that you have a mobile website. And the mobile and the website is, is fully, fully ready for mobile, not only just on the homepage. Now, if you can, on the chat box, please type yes, or no, and let me know if you do have a mobile website today. The first step is that you admit that you don't have a website, then the second step would be you have to get a mobile website today, if you, if you, if, especially if you are focusing on type of businesses and um, uh, you're, you're focusing with uh, those type of uh, uh, people that they're mostly mobile, uh, parents, uh, you know, the people, sometimes the B2B. Um, you have to analyze your, uh, your market to see if they're, uh, what percentage do you think they're going to check your website on mobile. You can also look at your Google Analytics um, and, and see how many people uh, are, um, are looking at your website from a mobile device. Now, Let's say you have the most beautiful website. Let's say you have a mobile website. Let's say you have the best form on your, uh, on your website. Is it enough to get leads? Is it enough to get prospect? No. When I consult with people on their website, I always, I always tell them, having a professional website with no marketing 
is exactly like building a most beautiful retail store or uh, school or studio on a second floor and having no signage out there, right? It's, you have the most beautiful office. You have the most beautiful retail store. However, nobody is coming into your store. Just, it's not because of the design. It's not because of the way that you design it. It's just because you, have, you do no marketing. There is no way for people to find out. Right? So if you have a website and it's not social and you are not doing SEO and you're not doing any sort of marketing, don't blame the design. Please don't go back to your designer and say you designed the, this website, I spent $10,000 on my website and yet I'm not getting any leads. Because it's not his fault. It's, it's your fault that you're not doing marketing. You have, for, you, when you design a beautiful office on the second floor, now you need to make sure to bring people to see this beautiful office. So. They, get imp- they, they become uh, a client by just being impressed by how professional you are. Your website is the exact same scenario. When you design a beautiful website, at the end, you have to make sure to bring a lot of traffic to this website, and everything is ready, uh, and they can fill up the form. There is enough information. You can educate them, and finally, at the end, you can sell them. Now, doing marketing. Marketing for a website can be done in different ways. Of course, social, uh, me, social media and having a more a social website is one aspect. Doing search engine optimization that I can talk about it in another webinar will be another thing. But at the end, you need to do some sort of marketing to bring your website. And please do me a favor. Every time that you are thinking of the marketing, if that marketing is, is you are going after that based on researches, based on uh, some education, don't think about the cost. Think about investments. What is the difference between a cost and investment? The cost is something that you pay and you're done. Investment comes with return of investment. Investment is when you pay something, you are expecting something back, right? And you have to measure that to see if that investment is working or not working. Like any other investment, there is no guarantee. You have to make sure whatever um, investment that you do, what you're expecting at the end. Is it paying off or is it not paying off? It's not, if it's not paying off, dig into it. Look at all the measurement that you have and make sure you are adjusting it in the right way to get an answer at the end. You get a result. Today, I'm going to only focus on the social part of your website. We can talk about SEO later. If you have any question, please email me, you know, send me messages on LinkedIn and Facebook. I'll be more than happy to answer your question. Today, I just want to focus on the social part of it. Now, my first question is, why is it important to have a social website? People talking about social media every day. People talk about having a mobile website or social website. Why is it important, though? All these stats that I'm sharing with you and all these stats that you can search for it online just brings one conclusion at the end. And the conclusion is the party is on social media today. Everybody's on the social media today. It used to be like you wanted to, to get a plumber, you would have, uh, you would have opened uh, yellow pages, you know, go in your area, find a few different names, whoever had the bigger ads, you would have called them. Today, whatever you want to do, the first thing you do, you go online, search for that specific thing on the search engine. can be Google, can be Bing, can be Yahoo, right? Now, how your website can be one of the top ones? Of course, SEO. Of course, social media, Right? Or you see on your Facebook that uh, one of your best friends or one of your friends, it said, uh, for example, Shelly just uh, joined ABC Martial Arts School. Uh, Shelly just joined ABC Yoga Studio. And you get curious. Okay, I'm looking for a yoga studio. Let's go there. Right? Or people start sharing their great experiences with a specific company. Or, on the other hand, people just go online and share their negative experiences with their specific providers or companies. This is the era. So do you want to be part of this party? Do you want to have some of these people who are hanging out and going on social media? On, I'm not even saying daily basis, on hourly basis. You should have a presentation. You should be there. Again, I'll give you an example. It's like uh, you're, you're offering a specific product to dentistry. And there is the biggest um, show and conference in dentistry in the U.S. If you don't have a booth, how can you expect to get some business out of that conference, right? You need to have a presentation so people have a chance to come and ask you a question. Or even if they have the credit card in their hands, they should be able to purchase 
So if you have a social presentation, first, you have to make sure it's very professional. Second, you have to make sure if the people want to book an event uh, from your Facebook, they can directly book it from Facebook. Don't send them on other pages. If they want to spend money uh, with you, they should be able to do it. If they're having a question, you have to make sure that you have people with answering those questions. At the end of the day, nowadays people, they don't care what you say about yourself for any businesses, for our business. doesn't matter how much I tell you. We do have the best service. We do have the best product. At the end, if my clients are not happy, it doesn't matter what I say. The reason that people go back to the Facebook is just because Facebook, they're, they're they're live people. They're, they're, you, you can see the profile. You can see they're real. But it doesn't matter how much I can uh, brag about my service on my website. This is me who's writing it. This is nobody else. Even if I put a picture with you know a, a text from one of my clients, it's not as good as you see somebody from Facebook that you can click on their profile. It's talking great about your service. That gives you confidence. Now. There is one tricky part about like Facebook and your website. In past few months when I talked to different business owners, I asked them, okay, so how's your website? Have you, have you gone social? They're like, yes. I'm like, what do you do? They say, uh, we added a Facebook button and LinkedIn button. Some they say uh, uh, the, the YouTube button in my homepage uh, uh, on my website, right? But this is not it. This is not becoming social for one reason. Because let me tell you what's happening. What is happening is you are spending all this money, you're investing all this money on the search engine optimization, on advertising here, advertising there, uh, sending brochures out, and you mostly people go, go up and uh, check your website. Now, they check your website, they may find what they're looking for, they may not find what they're looking for. The first thing they do, they, they want to check what other people are saying about you on Facebook. Right? They scroll down or maybe on top, they see, okay, follow us on Facebook. And they will click on the Facebook button. What will happen is they will leave your website, they will land on your business page on Facebook. So far, so good. However, doesn't matter what page of Facebook you're checking, on top left, you will see your personal notification, such as, Inbox messages, such as uh, you know, people who tagged you in this photo, people who liked your photo, and many other personal messages. And on the right-hand side, you will see some ads which has been designed based on your profile. So there is a very, very, very high chance for people who are on your business page to click on one of these two areas. As soon as they click in either on top left or on right hand side, they will leave your business page and they will go to the page that they clicked on. Now, you spend money, they came to your website, they left your website, they landed on your business page, now they've uh, left your business page, they're gone. So you're spending all these money for Facebook. They're checking the pictures one after the other. This person sent this message. This person sent another message. They forget where they were. So Facebook is good and bad. It's good just because everybody's on the Facebook, right? But it's distraction. Facebook shouldn't be an escape path for your website. So there are many different ways to do it. Um, we do have something called lounge, and the concept of lounge is for simply bringing all the conversation from the Facebook to your website. So people can log into your website with their Facebook uh, login and username and password. They can add anything they want. That, uh, that can be synced to your Facebook. Everything goes on Facebook. Everything from Facebook can go to your lounge. At the end of the day, if people see something on the Facebook and they're interested, they're going to see a picture and the subject, as soon as they click on that, they will come to your website. Now, with Lounge, we are getting the traffic from the Facebook instead of sending the traffic to the web, uh, Facebook. That's, what, that's one aspect. The second aspect, you have to make sure whatever you have it on your website has a social sharing. Meaning, if somebody likes that and they want to share it, you have to be able to, uh, to get at, take advantage of that. Um, uh, for example, like I think all of us, if not all, most of us, when we read the news uh, or when we watch a video and it's interesting, we like to share it on the Facebook. 
So if you are spending time to creating blogs, videos, articles, all these great things, you should be able to, uh, to, to get advantage, take advantage of that by simply gi giving ability to your, to your leads to share that on all the social media channels. Now, go back to your website. If, analyze your website yourself, but from a, a lead point of view, not your point of view, because at the end you design it for that. If there is any escape path today, stop it today. Make sure you look at it uh, from all different angles, do A-B testing, make sure you are not losing any leads. Now, so far we talked about you need to have a beautiful website, you need to have a professional design website, you need to have a, a, you know, some sort of um, easy access form for people to fill up. Um, also we talked about like you need to market your website. At the end of the day, you as a business owner have a budget for marketing. For different size of businesses, the budget varies. However, you need to make a right decision for, uh, for your marketing. And what is the right decision? The right decision always comes from some measurement, some, from some data. So you have to make sure that you measure your marketing, right? Call every marketing activity that you do as a marketing campaign, right? And at the end of the day, I, I sometimes, I, uh, sometimes I talk to some business owners and I say, okay, so what do you do for marketing? And they have some great um, different ways of marketing. You know, I advertise in Yellow Pages. I do have a Facebook page. I have um, Google AdWords and, and, and. I'm like, okay, so which one is working for you? They're like, uh, for example, like this campaign is working for me the best. I'm like, how do you say that? He's like, I got four leads from it. Now my next question is, how much money you spend on that? I know, what, 400? Okay, you spent 400 and you got four leads. So how many of those leads become a, become a member? Two? Okay, so you're spending $200 per member. Let me tell you now, if you spend that 200 and tell four of your members, I'll give you $50 cash today if you bring somebody in, that will work better, I guarantee you. My point is, if you are making a decision, look at some facts. Look at how much money you spent, what you got, what you got out of it, and, and put that aside of uh, the other things that you do, and see which one is working the best. Get rid of the one that is not working, and add more budget to the one that is working better for you. Right? Now, you need to have a system. You need to have a system to measure all these campaigns. The best way will be a system that can be connected to your web forms. If anybody fill up the form, it goes to that specific campaign. So if I have a web, uh, you know, form on the home page, um, I, I, can easily, uh, I can easily go um, and um, check my campaign at the end of the day and see how many new leads I got from the home page, how many of them has been converted to, uh, to clients. I can do the same thing for my Google ad. I can do the same thing for my Facebook. So I can uh, measure all these different uh, ways of people to contact me and I can make a right decision, right? At the end of the day, sometimes you need to dig into that and see maybe the problem is not the campaign. Maybe the problem is uh, what people are looking for is not in that page, right? I'm advertising for, for a mobile and, you know, I have a beautiful ad on Google, hey, get, uh, get your iPhone for this much. And when they go on that page, they see a picture of a uh, Samsung phone. Of course, people are not going to fill it up because people who came from that page are looking for something else. With the campaign, you can make sure to make that easier for people to find out. Some of them can be, uh, you can use like free uh, software, free tools like Google Analytics out there and look at all the data and see how many people are visiting and then compare that with your campaign in Perfect Mind or any other software uh, to see like how many of them has been converted to the client then you can make a right decision. Then you can say which campaign, which page, which uh, channel is working the best for you. Invest more money in that because you know the fact, if you invest more money, you're gonna get more. So, this is only one part of it. Let's say you already did all what I've told you so far. You hired a company who, 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 who are the best in their services and they do that for you. But you get all these leads. Doesn't mean that you're gonna get more clients and more customers. Of course not. 
These are only leads. Now, I have all these leads. What do I do now? Now, I go back to what we started it with. We talked about the leads. Now, let's talk about just a little bit about conversion, how you can convert them. Your website should nurture your leads, as simple as that. What do you mean by nurturing? Meaning, if any of my leads are asking for a specific thing, a specific question or a specific item online, or if they're interested in a specific product or service, my website should, should be able to edu-sell them, or my website should be able to warm them up for my, for my front desk, for uh, my sales team, whoever is in charge of contacting them. Always think about a few different things when you're thinking about your website. When a lead approaches you, it's not only you. He or she approaches, uh, approached you based on choice. So trust me, they're going to do the research on other businesses similar to your business in your area. So not only they're going to fill up a form on your website, they're going to fill up a form on, on the school, on the business uh, next block or next door. But who's going to win that lead? Whoever contact them first go, have a higher chance to, to, uh, to win that lead. The first one to either call them or follow up with them has a higher chance. So with that, simply have landing pages based on different products and services that you have. Link that landing pages to your automated email uh, marketing that you have on the background. As soon as they fill up the form, they should receive an email. And be creative in that email. Mr. So and so, thank you so much for uh, browsing on our website and, and uh, uh, fill up the form. Here is a quick video about our business. Um, uh, please watch it. And also, here is a link to uh, you know, the program A that you were interested. Please uh, stay tuned. Uh, we, we, uh, we're going to contact you in the next two hours. Now I know, okay, this business sending me a personal email, giving me enough information. Also, they're already educating me on, I'm going to call you next two hours, so I'm not expecting them to call. Then an email should go to whoever is in charge of calling all these leads. If it's a front desk, if it's a program director, if it's yourself, it's a sales team, doesn't matter who, who, who that person is. You have to make sure one notification goes to that person so we can call them right away as well. Now, what do you need to have in place? You already have all these leads. You already invested a lot of money in your marketing and your website. Number one, make sure to have automated emails on the background to go out on every single form that they fill up. Number two, make sure to have a notifier to yourself or your staff to call these people right away. In those emails, make sure to, to let them know uh, that, hey, we received your request. We're going to call you in the next hour, next two hours. Based on the campaign and the page and the form that you design in your landing page, make sure to know what is the primary interest for these people before the first phone call. If I call you and say, um, Mr. So-and-so, um, I know that you're interested in my iPhone, it will be way better than I call you. You already fill up a form on iPhone, and I call you and say, Mr. So-and-so, uh, is there anything that I can help you with? Right? You need to have different forms for different pages. Don't use one form for all the pages. Because at the end of the day, you need to measure those forms. You need to measure those pages. You need to measure those services. You need to measure those products. The, the, the more forms that you have, it will be easier for you to make a decision which of these are working the best and make the right decision for your marketing. If you can, call them within 10 minutes. Sometimes it's not possible. But let me share something with you. This is the speed to call in sales process and the impact on, on, on converting, you know, converting those leads. If you can call them within the first 30 seconds, the impact will be 160% more after you call them after two minutes. Right? Now look at the 24 hours, 17%. But don't let it go after 24 hours. When I say like in the first few hours, um, uh, in the first few hours, you still have a very high chance. So make sure to contact them right away. Now, we talked about all these. Now, you're going to measure everything that you have in place. You're going to measure what you do today, how you do today, right? 
and I usually ask these questions from from the people that I um, attend, the people who are attending my webinar or uh, my lectures. Would you like to work less? Would you like to make more money? Would you like to spend more money wisely? Would you like to work smarter but not harder? If your answer is no to all of them, I think we'll, the, the webinar should be done. If your answer is yes, then please, please stay in the room because now we need to talk about action items. doesn't matter what you do. doesn't matter what class you go to. doesn't matter what lecture you take. Make sure to have some action items at the end. Write down for yourself. That's what I do. When I attend the webinar myself, I, I write down up to three points or five points of what I learned from this webinar, right? From that five points, I try to come up with only one action item for myself in the next 24 hours and some action item within the next week. doesn't matter. If you go to the best classes, if you don't take actions, it doesn't mean anything. We need to take actions, right? So write down one action item in next 24 hours that you want to do. That action item can be very simple. Sit down on your website and analyzing the website based on this webinar and write your website. But make sure to come up with one action item. So the things that you need to do, create one landing page per week for different products or services. Track your online marketing and advertising campaign right away because I guarantee you, most of you are wasting your money on some of these advertising channels, not because you, you, don't, you want to, just because you ha don't have enough information to make the right decision, which of these advertising channels is working uh, the best. Since you're uh, uh, wasting your money on these channels, you are not spending uh, wise money and investing money on the other channels that may work for you. So please track your online marketing. Create and establish marketing parameters for yourself. What, are, what is the campaign parameters? I'm investing this much money. This is my expectation from this. This is what I call return of investment. Sometimes you have one campaign up there. You have some forums. You're not looking um, to get any more uh, members of that. You just want to get more subscribers. So you have to measure that based on your measurements. I, I, I'm, I'm spending four hours to create this beautiful article about this specific uh, topic. I'm putting it online, and my return of investment will be getting 25 subscribers. I'm putting this offer up there. My uh, goal with that is to get five students or five members. But make sure your goal and parameters are realistic. Individually respond to all leads and generate it. If you have an automated email in the background that can uh, customize all these and you set it up once, that's awesome. If not, you need to answer all these individually one by one. Follow up with leads weekly. I'm going to have another webinar on about the sales part of this uh, lead generation. And you cannot give up on your leads because you spend money on those. You need to call them and 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 call them again. They will respond anyways. Send them an email. Send them two emails. But don't give up on them. Roughly about 13 hours a week, 52 hours a month, is roughly what you need to do. This is on the side of doing all the marketing and doing all the graphic design thing that you need to do. Now, in order to do that, you have two different ways. I always break it down uh, for people so it's going to be very obvious for them. If you don't have time to make it happen, there are two different ways to do it, right? There's only two options. Number one, hire someone to do it. And that someone can be an individual. Um, I'll talk, I will talk about like advantages and disadvantages. Or you have a business tool on the background who does everything on your behalf, and all you need to do is look at the, um, you know, uh, just look at the reports. After finding and hiring and training, what are the advantages and disadvantages to hiring someone? Number one, it's going to be a few hours a week, roughly about $2,000 a month if you want to hire somebody full time. Not being on the driver's seat, meaning when you want to update your website, you have to wait for them. If you want to do something, you need to wait for them. They may get sick, they may quit, right? There is no, uh, there is, a, there is insecurity for you that people, uh, you know, what if they leave us tomorrow? 
The second option is get a reliable business tool. You can create everything within seconds. You can define everything once, and everything will be done automatically. You can map your leads and prospects in one place. You can have all the lead nurturing in place. You can automatically share every single post into 300 different social media channels. You can bring the Facebook traffic to your website. You can make your website 24-7 pro shop for you, right? And you have a full access to it. This is, this is a make, uh, now this is a choice that you need to make at the end. Now the question would be, do you have 52 hours? That's great, you can do it yourself. Or if you want to have it, you can hire somebody else. My, my philosophy is always find the most reliable way, right? And that has to be a system in place, doesn't matter how much it is. Think about investment that does everything for you accurately and you can have access to it all the time. You can make any changes right away. You don't have to wait for anybody. This is the foundation of your business. Meaning, if somebody leaves, uh, your, your system will, will be in place. If you have to leave, system will be in place. If you get sick, system is in place. If you have to go to the vacation, vacation system in place. The foundation of any business is a system. If you have that foundation, you are ready to grow. If not, then it all depends on the people who are running the business. So, at the end, I have only one thing for you. The more automate that you do, the more automation that you do, the more auditing that you do, you have a better business. Everything is going to be done. There is always a human error involved if you want to rely on people. But when it's a system, system will do it for you. Now, thank you so much for your time. I hope that you learned something from this webinar. Um, you can call us at any time if you are asking about the system that I was talking about it, and if you need to learn more about Perfect Mind, um, we'll be more than happy to help you with that. Um, and then um, this is also my personal um, email. Uh, you can add me on Facebook or you can add me on LinkedIn. I'll be more than happy to be in touch with you. Thank you so much, Fahid. Thank you, and have an awesome day.